Why do I like the pyramids so much? Well, they're one of the seven wonders of the world. One of humanity's greatest achievements. And, like, just look at them. They're just these <laughs> beautiful mountains jutting up out of the desert, built by humans. And the precision involved, the size of the blocks, the everything about it is just so impressive, right? Like the, how could they move all these blocks? Do they, how do they cut them all? But, and they are, they're so precisely fit together. And this precision thing is very fascinating to me. So, the blocks, they so precisely fit together. <laughs> you can't even get a piece of paper in between them. <laughs> well, for one, anything that touches another thing you're not going to be able to get a piece of paper in between it, right? So, like, my fingers are touching, and I can't get a piece of paper in between it. So I don't know why other people find that impressive, but the precision <laughs> part is definitely impressive. So, like, with the... <laughs> But the paper would be more impressive to me if the if you could actually get the piece of paper in between the blocks, because that would mean that uh, the blocks are like somehow floating, like some cool like sci-fi wall. But like <laughs> anything that touches, you're gonna be able to get a piece of. You can't. By definition, you're not gonna be able to get a piece of paper in between it. But um, the the precision part of it is impressive. <laughs> um, or it seems that way. We're told that it's very impressive. Um, but I feel like precision is just something that uh, humans inherently inherently do. Um, and that it's, it's much easier to uh, make something with precision, and you don't actually need much advanced tooling or knowledge or anything of that matter. And so I'm holding this piece of paper, and part of that's to demonstrate that. So... Um, so you can take any flat object that's flexible that you can fold and it doesn't matter what the shape of it is, it can be any shape as long as it's reasonably flat then all you have to do is be able to fold it and <clears throat> you get a perfect straight edge And so, sure, the, you still have to have some sort of uh, flatness to, to start with in order to do, so that when the, whatever material folds, you get a straight edge. But if you think about materials like fabric, where um, Egypt is, of course, well known for their history in fabric making, um, you don't need much precision to make like something like a loom to be able to make a piece of fabric and then to do something like uh, then all you need to do is just fold it in half and now you have a, a perfect straight edge that you can use to uh, build other tooling or maybe just check that directly up against a rock or whatever um, and what's really cool about this you can take it a step further is you take this piece of I can take this piece of paper and I fold it again and now that I have this straight edge, as long as I just line this straight edge up against the other straight edge, you get a perfect square. Like that. So you fold something once, you get a straight edge. And you fold it again, and you get a square. Now, of course this is nothing new. People know about that you can do this with paper, but... I think what's really fascinating about this is to think about, like, 
what it would have been like to live in Egypt at the time. Like, say they've, they've proposed that they're going to build the pyramids or whatever. And they're like, uh, of course, we're going to build this big, huge project. But we, it needs to look good, right? We need to have it look very precise and, and angular and square. And you there, every time you put your clothes away, you're taking them and you're folding them up in half and folding them up again and you're stuffing them away. And then it clicks to you one day. It's like, oh, wait a minute, that's a... That's like perfectly angular and square. Hey, maybe this can help with the big project we're working on. And so you go and you show this to the king or whatever. You're like, hey, look, I can take this fabric and I, I fold it in half and I fold it in half again. And now I have this square and we can make things that are perfectly square using this. And I just think that's so amazing. Because, like, that's what it's like to be a scientist, right? And, like, people always want like, well, who built the pyramids? Well, scientists did. People did. It's like the... It can just be something so simple. You're folding your clothes every day. And that can lead to something where you're... You're building a mountain. <laughs> and, like... I think this perspective of of Egypt is so much more engaging to think about than other ones where it's like, oh, you know, they're just like had some secret uh, advanced technology that we don't know about or aliens came and did it, but like it, it's like at the end of the day, it's just people working together and, and it's not just like it not just people, it's like multiple cities of people working together to <laughs> not just move mountains, they're just building mountains. <sighs> just how inspiring that must have been to be like, yeah, we're <laughs> and they didn't just build one, they <laughs> they built another one and then another one. Like, imagine what we could do, like, ugh. and it just takes something so simple. It's so impressive. Build a mountain. <laughs> How crazy is that?